Hello everyone! It's March 20th, 2018. It's Tuesday! It's Harp Tuesday! And the reason it's Harp Tuesday today is because of my patrons. I recently joined Patreon, which is a way you can support what I do and get some little extras as well. And I set an initial goal of $75 pledged per month, reached that, and to celebrate I'm doing a month of Harp Tuesdays. So in March I'm recording an episode every week instead of every other week. And in fact, we're getting pretty close. I set another goal of 150, where again, I'll celebrate if we reach that with a month of Harp Tuesdays. So if you've been enjoying seeing a Harp Tuesday episode every month, um, you might consider going and being my patron. So the episode this week, I'm going to talk about regulation. That's a very specific type of maintenance. So sometimes maybe there's a Harp tech that comes to your town every month or six months or a year, and you get used to the idea, oh, I'll take my Harp in for regulation. But in fact, they do more than just regulation. They'll do maintenance, maybe replace the pedal felts, maybe check, isolate and figure out what this buzz is that you're having, check the general condition of the harp. But regulation is a very specific thing. And what it refers to is making sure that the harp is in tune, whether a lever or a pedal is engaged or not. So we can quite easily tune an open string when there's no lever engaged or no pedal, and I'll be demonstrating pedals in a moment. So for, for this, I'm, I'm just using ClearTune, which is an excellent app on my phone. When you're doing regulation, you want to use your very best tuning tool in terms of getting a very accurate reading. So maybe uh, maybe even an expensive strobe tuner or whatever. But uh, for the moment, I, I'm just using ClearTune. I find it actually to be a really, really excellent um, tuning app. And so, Let's see if I can display this on this camera um, and maybe read it myself. So if I play this B, for example, that is pretty good. A little tiny bit sharp, maybe. Um, a little awkward to be tuning and holding this. There we go. Eh, still, still a little sharp. Well, close enough, we'll, we'll call it for the moment. And again, you do want to try and be as accurate as possible, like tune it as, as accurately as possible. If I engage this lever, what should happen is now we have a, a maybe a, just a tiny bit sharp uh, B natural. Instead, what we see is it's quite a bit sharp. So that's bad. That's the case of the regulation is not quite perfect. And we would ideally like to fix that. So how do we do that? So let's think about what's going on. So. With the open string, when it's running from the bridge pin down to the down to the um, soundboard, we have total freedom of getting that in the perfect tune. So it's vibrating at the correct rate. When we engage a lever or, or change a pedal, what happens is we shorten the string, right, by some type of mechanism. The, these are Kamak levers. They do this a certain way. I'm going to show you Loveland levers here in a moment, or the, or the discs on a pedal harp. But they shorten that string. So now, it's vibrating at a higher frequency, which makes it so that it is sharper. And, and we can see, you know, that makes sense, right? The, the, the smaller strings are a higher pitch. We can, I guess you can, um, right? The smaller we make this string, the higher frequency it vibrates and the sharper the sound, the higher the pitch. So then in this particular case, what we're saying is when we engage this lever, it's now too sharp. So what does that mean, right? What does that mean? It means we have shortened this vibrating length of the string, this part that's actually vibrating, too much. So this region that has, that we're not playing, that, um, this region here, is taking up too much string, so that this is now too short. What we want to do is lengthen the vibrating section of the string and shorten this amount, All right? Now, okay, well and good. How do we do that? Well, we have a couple options. If we're lucky, our bridge pin is threaded, which is the case oh, on these Kamak harps. And Dusty Strings, for example, has threaded uh, bridge pins. Um, 
that makes it that makes it really easy to try one option. So what we're going to do is so if we think okay, this part that we're cutting off is too long. We want to decrease the size. If we move this bridge pin in towards the harp, you can see this angle here. If this were more upright, we would be cutting off less string. Whereas if this was way out here, right, it would be a very acute angle and we'd be using a lot of extra string here. So in other words, if it's too sharp and we want to make it flatter with a lever engaged, right, we want to move the bridge pin in towards um, towards the harp. If it were too flat, we'd move it out. I'm going to get the correct tool. I'm going to take this and I'm going to tighten it. And let's find out what that's done to our tuning. So again, if I can display this, always check because with a movement, it may no longer be in tune. Okay, it's in tune. That's better, right? It's not quite as sharp. Now, let's screw it in a little bit further. Righty tighty. I'll have to see. See what that's done. flat. Still a little bit sharp. Now I also want to check because, aha, I know uh, this is this was preset. Uh, I mean, I, I, that as we move it closer towards the harp, what can happen is we want ideally the strings to be right in the, the string to run right in the center between this and this, right? Because that gives it the widest amount of room to vibrate. Now it's gotten so close to the this side of the mechanism that if I pluck that firmly, you hear that buzz? That's because it's hitting this side. So that's not good, right? So even if I were to screw it in a little bit further and we were to get it perfectly regulated, in other words, that half step would be a perfect amount, it's not a good option because I can't play that very loudly now. So instead, great, that's okay. Our next option, so that's the easiest, right? We just, we don't have to do anything with a string. We just tighten or loosen, great. Another option would be to move this lever up or, or down, the whole lever itself. So you can see there's screws and you can see that there's room to slide it, in this case up, doesn't look like a ton of room to slide it down from where it's set. That obviously will change how much we're gripping off the, taking off the string, right? If we move it up, what does that mean? It means we're gripping less, shortening it less, so that means it will become flatter. The vibrating will become a longer string. The longer it is, the lower it will sound. That's what we want. We want to move it up. If it were too flat right now and we needed to make it sharper, we'd move it down, we'd be cutting off more string, would be resulting when it's engaged in a smaller length of string. So I would want to move this up. So I would need the correct screwdriver. And so obviously I can't do it with a string in the way. I can potentially pop this off. I may want to loosen it. Um, I'm not as familiar with regulating Kamak levers. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this to some extent. I'll demonstrate on the pedal harp that you can certainly often just pop it right off. Now, in this case, we do have this rather an annoying part of the lever right there. Okay, we've let it off. Great. Uh, let me just adjust this camera a tiny bit. So, now we get our handy, handy little screwdriver. And there we are. It's a T8 screw. Um, so lefty Lucy, we're going to loosen this. Ah, this uh, screwdriver set is excellent because it has an extender. You can see that I couldn't quite get 
get that in and especially as we get up to these and also with a, with a little just the bridge pins it's hard to get in so that's where you need something that's thin enough so this should hopefully do the trick excellent lefty loosey I'm gonna loosen that okay so there we see now we can move it up or down so it was basically all the way down right um, and which we obviously before we totally loosen we would like to try to remember that um, so we're gonna it was fairly sharp we're gonna move it up so here it was we're gonna move it up maybe this much and again we can also then use the bridge pin tightening or loosening to make some finer adjustments okay so then let's gently tighten this while it's in place now i feel like i read somewhere don't tighten these too hard there we are that feels pretty solid okay so let's give that a try then let's uh see if we can thread this back on there we go excellent um oh. and let's uh check our tuning it's not great obviously for the string to be loosened quite a bit and then and then brought back up to pitch um not ideal again this is where just adjusting the bridge pin is is excellent i'll show this to you um it's still sharp but not quite as sharp let's take a let's take a look so engage the lever what's that showing oh that's actually pretty good isn't it Perfect, has it gotten flat here? Oh, okay. Yeah, so sometimes, right, when, you, when you're like, oh, that actually looks pretty good, just double check on the original one, in this case, again, because we loosened that string, that you haven't, that it has, that it's still in tune, right? Maybe it's gone flat in this case, so the other one looked like it was good, but in fact, it's relatively sharp. Yeah, it's still a little bit sharp. So let's, let's do a slightly more drastic um, change here. So you can see regulation can be quite a fiddly little job. It's not necessarily hard in the sense that it's just you, you kind of know what you need to do, but you may have to do it quite a bit. Now, this is where, again, if you do, if you regulate all the time, a, a tech would probably know, oh, in order to get that that much flatter from, you know, it's, it's too sharp by that amount on this length of string, I know approximately how much I'm gonna have to lower that lever. Um, and, you know, you, get, you build a little sense that maybe allows you to do things more rapidly. There we go. Okay, let's bring that one back up to pitch. Still really not quite as much as I would like. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's try it one more time. Well, let's try it one more time. Let's try quite an extreme change. probably edit some of this out so you don't have to watch this all in real time so let's let's go quite a ways up right let's we also have some room to lengthen this it, again the the string coming down from the bridge pin is not in the center at the moment it's skewed a little bit towards the harp itself so we have some room to loosen this and bring this out if we find oh actually that's yeah, if we find that we, yes, if we find that this is too flat now and we need to sharpen it, um, we need to raise it. So let's go ahead and be quite, quite dramatic with that amount we're moving it there. Tiny 
tiny bit flat, so let's try, as I say, we have that option. Let's try to loosen this a little bit, bring this out, and see what that does for us. So that's, that's not bad. And now, hey, hey, that is looking pretty good with this ability to just fine tune by moving the bridge pin in or out. That's a really easy and, and great way to do that fine tuning, right? Fantastic. Um, I want to just show you These are Loveland levers. So a common, common type of lever. Now, I, no, I don't think these, this particular harp, I don't think the bridge pins are threaded. So then we have to do what I just did, that, that idea of we have to loosen the, um, uh, sorry, you can't really see. You have to loosen the, flashlight. Loosen the lever itself. Can be awkward to get in, a, a, a ball uh, screwdriver I'll show you in a second, can be a good option. Get into that, loosen it, you know, pop the string out of the way, loosen it, either move it up or down, again, depending, is it, is it too flat when you got the lever engaged? That means we need to move it down because we need to engage more string, we got to lengthen the amount from the bridge pin down to the lever when engaged. Is it too sharp like we had? when we had it engaged, it means we need to move it up because we have to lengthen the string that's sounding. So, um, same idea, right? Like Dusty Strings currently has threaded um, bridge pins. So whether you've got the Kamak levers or the Loveland levers, same idea, first go would be with the, with the uh, bridge pins. Um, and that's a, you know, that's a great, great option. Um, oh, here's, this is not actually the right type for the Loveland levers. It's a, uh, slightly too large, but um, this type of thing allows you to operate at an angle. Uh, also, maybe show it on this camera. So, um, again, if, uh, Dusty Strings, for example, Thermal and Harps has some great information on uh, what tools you might need to do the job. So let's let's switch over to the pedal harp. All right, here we are. Welcome to the pedal harp section. So with a pedal harp, it's the same principle, but we have the complication of two engagement points, right? So that, of course, open string, we get that in tune. We want this amount to be exactly half a tone and this amount also to be half a tone. So first thing you're doing when you're regulating harp is check for over or under action. So in other words, once you, when you fully engage the pedal, right? Check to make sure that if you engage it further, this is not moving. None of you know, the, that first disc is no longer moving. That if it does, right? That is, I think it's over action um, that it's, we're, it's still being engaged as, as we go down, right? Or check that it doesn't like getting fully engaged maybe here and you still have some more to go with the pedal. You want it to basically move all the way down. So under action and it was when you can barely push it down because it's already fully engaged here. Um, if you have either of those, you need to go down and adjust your pedal rods and it's up uh, on Lion and Healy's at least it's a big nightmare. On Chemax it's actually quite easy, but uh, the good news is you hopefully won't have to do that very often. I think I've done that twice. I gener generally regulate my own harp. Um, but just something to be aware of, because if that is going on, then you might get the regulation, but then when you fix that, it's, the regulation is going to be all out of whack. So, okay. So then, ideally, in tune, in tune, in tune. If they're not, the next best ideal case is in tune, out of tune, let's say too sharp, out of tune by the same amount. In other words, this interval is correct. So if this is like a little bit too sharp, then this is also a little bit too sharp. This is a little bit too flat, the C natural, C sharp's also a little bit too flat. 
That means all we have to worry about is this distance here. If we get that right, then this secondary distance will also be correct. So our best option is to just play with the height of this bridge pin. You can see, you can see how we just unscrew, unscrew, loosen these screws. So pop the string off first, right? Like we pop the, pop the string off. Loosen the screws. Move this. This is actually a bad, bad spot to demonstrate because we'd have to pop it off even further. Right? Um, and go back and, and see if see if it works, right? So again, the idea being that if uh, this is natural, uh, sorry, that the, the, the open string is in tune, when we engage it, if it's too sharp, right? That means it's cutting off too much string. We want to move this down. So too sharp, it goes down. If it's too flat, we move it up because we want it to engage more string. That's uh, kind of our best and easiest case scenario. Now, what if, say, this is perfectly in tune and then this is too sharp or flat? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that means that we want to play, our easiest option is to play with the amount that this engages. So right now, uh, let's maybe, I don't know which one would show up better, maybe this F string. Let's try this F string. So it's not, it's not grabbing the string that much. You can see this is maybe grabbing it a little bit more. So that we could certainly tighten these, move these, uh, in a counterclockwise direction so that we grab more of the string so that it, in fact, ends up being shorter. So if it was, in other words, if this is in tune and this is too flat, we can grab it further. Maybe we could loosen a little bit. This is something you can actually check. So to me, this looks like it's not really engaged that much. So if I gently put my, take my foot off the pedal a little bit, at a certain point, of course, it's not grabbing it enough, but we should also be able to see it as it gradually becomes flatter and flatter. Let me give you an example of that. So, so let's, uh, let's take this, oh, sorry. Uh, so here it is. If I start to, I think that's because it's um, it's not that engaged at the beginning. Can't see, so that is a little bit sharp, right? And then as we move down, it becomes a little bit flatter. Hope I think it's a little. I can't actually see very well on this angle, but that should be the case, right? Of course, at a certain point, we get this sound, which means that we're not gripping the string enough, right? So that's a problem. Um, so that's, that's one of our options is to grip. And again, if, if it's just this distance, but what if, what if we need it to be less gripped? What if we need it to be flatter, right? What if we need it to be, a, uh, that it's, um, it's engaged too much and we need it to engage less uh, so that this string becomes longer, this becomes shorter. Um, well, our other option is to try to check the, 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 the right here, how how far away from us this is and how close to us this is, so that if we if we can move this, say, in this case, it's pretty, pretty close as possible. Let's get an example where that's not the case, maybe. This one, yeah, okay, perfect. You can see that if this were even more upright, that instead of being at a slight angle, the distance between these two, if they were right above each other, we potentially would have less distance being cut off. So then we might have to adjust this, and that means we would have to maybe adjust this, and these also have some play back and forth, which can also play into things. So it's all a bit of a messing around. Uh, I just wanna demonstrate how to loosen these, right? Because that's not, these, right? Great, we do the screw screws. I want to just show you how to do these. So let's take this all the way off. 
So they are done, and hopefully you can see this. We use our screwdriver, just a single-bladed screwdriver, and engage the screw. I'm grabbing the other side of the harp so I can apply some pressure. I'm pushing in, there's a spring, we should feel that. I'm pushing in. I'm gonna put my thumb here to kind of stabilize it, and I'm gonna turn uh, counterclockwise. Turn to the left, and you'll feel it loosen. So now at this point, it is loose. I can loosen a little bit more, and now I can move this disc. Um, I guess I will just, I, I, I demonstrate, right? I can, I can move this, right? But I want to get it back to where it was. Just to think about here. But, you know, so I have some, I, that's how I would now get it to change the play of things. Then to tighten it, I will again, again, righty tighty, lefty loosey, which is not the case on um, the Kamak harps, by the way. Um, they have a slightly different system. Um, which is excellent. Uh, I will, again, I'm gonna stabilize this with my thumb, keep it there, because the thing is, unlike the Kamak Harps, is I tighten this, the disc itself is gonna to wanna to turn a little bit. Not a ton, generally pretty good, but just be aware of that. You might have it all lined up in the place you want. I'm gonna push in a little bit. I'm gonna tighten fairly firmly, right? Because I don't want this sliding as I'm playing. There we go, hopefully that, uh, is still in the appropriate place it should be. If you're doing a bunch of these and don't want to loosen these, you might have end up having put something on your thumb to help protect it. Um, anyway, that's the technique. Again, not only is there the pitch to be concerned with, but also are they engaged enough, right? So that we don't get this, this sound of, you know, not a fully engaged, one, it could be here, could also be here. And are they engaged too much? If, you know, if, you, if it's really grabbing a ton of string, it's not gonna be good for the life of your gut strings. Um, again, sometimes maybe there's no great option. On the upper register, sometimes you have to end up getting, um, uh, you can get uh, discs that are slightly bigger so that this can actually hit higher on the string, because if it becomes too sharp, it becomes hard for us to have an option. Because harps shift over time, right? They, they, things move, and what was in good regulation at the beginning may not always um, be, the, be that way, unfortunately. Anyway, hopefully that just gives you a little bit of insight. It's the type of thing, being able to regulate a harp is, I think, a type of thing you should at least know and, and feel like you could tackle this if you needed to. So the, the primary concept, right, is that open string, is it in tune? It's in tune, engage the lever or disc. If that is too sharp, right, if it's now too sharp, it means we've cut off too much string between the um, bridge pin and the disc or lever. We have to somehow shorten that gap. If, on the other hand, by raising it, it's too flat, it means we've not cut off cut off enough string, right? This is... is uh, is vibrating it to lower frequency, so we have to lengthen the gap here, shorten the gap of the, of the vibrating string. Hopefully that makes sense, uh, gives you a little bit of knowledge, and hopefully was useful. So I'll see you next week for the last Harp Tuesday of the month, of this month of Harp Tuesdays. Cheers.